Tony, I've always uh, admired the challenges that directors have working with actors with uh, large egos. Mm -hmm. Crimson Tide, of course I'm talking about Bear the Dog. Right. How much of a pain was he to work with? Um, he was brilliant, actually. He was brilliant. And the biggest pain was persuading the studio to let me use him. Or even let me put a dog in the movie. They hated the idea. Oh, really? Yeah, because they said, this isn't real. You never have a dog on a submarine. You know, this would never happen. And, um, but, uh, it, it, you know, a captain of a submarine is the ruler of his own roost, you know? And so whatever those guys want to do once they leave port is up to them. And uh, uh, animals and pets have been known to go on submarines. It is a stretch, but... And I just thought he, the dog, the little Jack Russell, was such a perfect reflection of Gene's character. So how difficult was it to work with the dog on those sets? Did it freak the dog out at all? Um, no, other than he bit Gene a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> Got pissed off with Gene and, took it and went for him, yeah. And uh, actually, one, one, one takes on camera when Gene goes, hey, you sailor, because he, he just bit him on the hand, yeah. So he's feisty little thing. He's English, you know, the Jack Russells are English. Right. English, they use them for fox hunts. Right. And they drop them down, like the huntsman carries them in a little pouch on their chest, and they drop them down the foxholes to get the fox out. You know, I've always uh, wondered uh, about directors' ability to spot talented actors at the beginning of their careers. Mm -hmm. I was watching uh, The Hunger recently yeah. and saw Willem Dafoe pop up in his movie debut. Yep. Uh, what do you remember of working with him on that movie? Um, it's funny, you know, I think it's, it's, it's not easy to spot talent, but there's something about like, it's about. About a, I think it's the personality that gets you. When I first met, first met Willem, um, you know, the first interview that I did with him, there's something about him which was sort of, which was captivating. And, uh, and that's always the ingredients that, that makes these guys move on in, in, the, in their lives as actors. When you think back of uh, films that were, that exerted a lot of pressure on you to make, mm -hmm. uh, two movies, Top Gun and Days of Thunder, yeah. Uh, how did those two movies rate in terms of, of pressure? Huge. Pressure, pressure, huge, huge pressure. <laughs> I mean, uh, Top Gun was the, my first Hollywood movie, you know, because after The Hunger, I couldn't get arrested. Every, you know, Hollywood hated The Hunger. I thought it was an esoteric art house movie. And then uh, the Don and Jerry gave me Top Gun, you know, and I was sort of, they beat the shit out of me on Top Gun. Yeah, they gave me a, because I was sort of new to the Hollywood system. They gave me a hard time. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, Top Gun was was sixteen and a half million dollars, which was which in that even at that time was pretty reasonable for that sort of movie, you know. And then, um, but the pressure, my pressures then were because I was a new director, new to the system, so I had no clout. So I was struggling, you know, to fight the studio and fight the boys. And my taste was was much darker then, yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, I was much I, th I wanted to a darker movie. Um, but the, Don and Jerry were right, and I was wrong in the yeah. final final analysis. But yeah. Days of Thunder was a $60 million movie, and I had more clout then, but the pressure rises with money. Yeah. And the pressure was humongous, and the pressure just to complete by a date. We had, we had no time. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting with, with that film is that it seemed to be perceived by a lot of people as not being a hit movie. I mean, mm -hmm. I know it made money, but did you, do you think that was the film that people decided, let's cut Tom Cruise down a notch, or do you think that the, the time pressure affected the film? I think the honest truth, you know, the film was regarded as a failure. $82 million domestic, and this is called it a failure. Um, and it did great worldwide at box office worldwide. It did big numbers. But um, I think the film didn't do as well as it did because of lack of time. You know, there was, wasn't enough time. You know, it was, a, it was a... I always wanted to do a race car movie, you know, and I was actually working on a thing called Indy before, before Days of Thunder came along. And... Uh, and then Days of Thunder came along, and, and we were trying to piece together the script as we were in pre-production. Pre you know, and we had we had the sort of basis and the kernel of an idea. It was a guy called Tim Richmond who died, you know, the year before, and he was this this superstar in NASCAR racing. He was an, an over, overnight wonder, and he died two years later. And he was the sort of basis for Tom's character. But outside that, we we're trying to piece it together as we went. And as pressure increases, you get close to production, and when you're in production, people, I think, you stop seeing clearly. And um, and then we had a deadline to meet, you know, and uh, um, and so we only had three weeks. I had 21 days from the point I finished shooting to the point they took the film away from me. 21 days is no time to edit a movie. You know, uh, turning to Crimson Tide, uh, I spoke to Wolfgang Peterson mm -hmm. not long after this boat came out. Yeah, and he talked about uh, the incredible 
tension on the set because of the closed in spaces and what the right. crew and cast would do to relieve that tension afterwards. Right. Uh, what did the folks on this production do uh, when they got away from the sound stage? Um, to be honest, it wasn't, you know, what, what Wolfgang did, he actually had a real, or once a real submarine, he, he built a set yeah. which was the size of a submarine and he, he wanted to get, make it feel very claustrophobic, so he put the guys, it was a closed wall set, you know, a real sub, so the guys couldn't get out, so it was much more claustrophobic than what we had. I, I, and he got his cluster through by wide lenses in a closed environment. I got mine by long lenses backed off, and by com with a long lens you compress everything so you feel everything comes down and in. So I, I achieved the claustrophobia in another way. But our set was relatively easy because the sides were open, the actors could walk out and smoke and, and hang out. So it was a relatively relaxed environment. You know, people didn't, you know, actually working, claustrophobia didn't get to them. Yeah, how difficult was this film for your uh, Steadicam operators? I, I really admired some mm. of the shots uh, uh, coming down the, the, the walkways. Right. Uh, did you get a lot of crew members banging into uh, doors on takes? Yep. No, it was, it was hard, you know, because you look at what Daspo did. They put a rail that was like monorail at top, and they shot the camera down, down that. And um, we, did, we tried a similar thing. We tried several tests, you know, in terms of things that we, uh, um, you know, Ways we, I thought I could get the shot I wanted because the corridors are so narrow, and I wanted that that narrowness, you know, sort of the claustrophobia. And I kept, you know, trying different things, and in the end, the thing we had that was the most successful was just like it was a little, it was a little uh, two-wheel trolley that we just pushed and ran at the guys coming up and past us, and it was trial and error because the camera got totaled two or three times, and guys got hit in the ribs and hit in the back. Yeah, but uh, but all those, those moments between were exciting and just what I needed. Did you have any one particular day on this shoot where technically just things wouldn't work, where just things kept going wrong? Yes, <laughs> many days. Um, to be honest, the, the the one major fear I had was the gimbal, you know, and that's that that, that the whole device on that, that the, the, whole, the set was built on this huge rocker plate, um, and I was always worried that that was going to go down because you know so much. Of the movie is spent, move, the, the set is banking and tilting, and I think we got maximum value out of it in the movie. You know, and the, the studio were reluctant to pay that money for that gimbal because it was a huge piece of change, chunk of change. And um, but I think we got we got great value out, and and, and uh, but it only went down two days. Yeah, so we were lucky. Not lucky. We had great guys who actually built it. Great. Thanks. An amazing movie. I really, really, really enjoyed it. It's going to be big. So.